Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll be going over how you can use functions and groupings to create calculations in Sigma. If you've already started working in Sigma and you've created some simple charts and pivot tables, then you've actually already used these features, probably without even realizing it. Functions and groupings are fundamental to the workings of Sigma, and they are being used under the hood even when you can't see them, including when creating charts and pivot tables. Understanding them now will help you to master more advanced concepts and leverage all of Sigma's capabilities more easily. Let's get started. To follow along in this tutorial, create a new table and set the data source as the Sigma Sample Database. Select Retail Plugs Electronics Hands-On Lab Data. Please keep in mind that the Plugs Electronics Hands-On Lab Data is updated daily, so as you attempt to follow along, your numbers may not match mine precisely. However, the calculations and workflows we use will be the same, only with slightly different results. Now, let's look a little bit at how this table is set up and how Sigma interacts with it. Just like in other spreadsheet tools, Sigma allows you to create calculations by writing formulas using functions and operators in the formula bar. But unlike in other spreadsheet tools, formulas in Sigma are always applied at the column level rather than at the level of individual cells, giving one result per row down the entire column. These columns all have explicit data types such as number, date, text, logical, and so on. Let's try out making a formula by making a new column that calculates our revenue using our quantity and price columns. Add a new column and enter in the formula bar quantity times price. Rename the column to revenue and set the formatting to currency for convenience. Before we move on to performing some more interesting calculations and operations with this revenue column, it's important we understand a little bit more about the basics of using functions and some of the fundamental limitations that they have. This will help us avoid some common missteps as we get into topics like groupings and aggregates. When using functions in Sigma, remember that functions commonly require that only certain data types be used in certain arguments of the function. As an example, let's try to find which values of order number contain the digit zero using the contains function. We got an error, and it looks like argument one is invalid for the function contains. Sigma expected text, and we provided a number. You can get more specific information about what you need to change by mousing over the error icon that appears on the formula bar. Fortunately, while typing functions in the formula bar, Sigma provides helper text describing how to use it as well as a link to our documentation page for that function, so you can check what syntax is needed and read more about how to use the function. You can also use the function index to see a list of every function, organized by the data types that they apply to or by their functionality. Looking at the function index, we can see that type functions are what we need here. Type functions are a function that can change a column's data type. If we click type functions in the table of contents, we can see a list of type functions that might be useful for other cases where a data type does not match the argument's expected type. The text type function is what we're looking for according to its description. It will convert our column's data from numbers to text, which is exactly what we're looking for. Let's go back and append the contain function by adding text before the order number column to convert it to the text data type and verify that it worked. You've probably noticed that so far in all of these examples, we've only created calculations based on values that are all in the same row as each other. What if we want to create aggregate calculations based on values in multiple rows in the table? To do that, we'll need to use groupings. Groupings are structures and data elements, which includes tables, pivot tables, and charts, that cluster together the rows of your data table that share the same value in the column that you've grouped by. This lets you create calculations that give results for each group based on the rows in that group. Let's see more of what that looks like in action. Here, we have a table of retail orders with one row for each product purchase on a given order. For example, on order 131, we have these nine SKUs purchased. If we add the order number column to the groupings field, we now have one group for each distinct order number. You can now see here that the nine rows with order number 131 are all in the same group, 131. If we create a calculation based on that, the result will be based on the rows of the target column in that group. Add the revenue column to the calculations field in the grouping section. The revenue column now displays the sum of revenue for all rows in that group. You can also nest groupings within higher level groupings. This allows for more advanced calculations and data exploration. Like, for example, we can use multiple groupings to view a breakdown of our revenue by year, month, and region all at the same time. You can drag and drop columns in the grouping area to change the order of higher and lower level groupings. When there are multiple groupings, the groups created by lower level groupings will nest within the groups created by the higher level grouping. 
Let's collapse some groups to make this easier to see. You can collapse individual groups with the buttons on each row, but you can also collapse all the groups in a given grouping with the button on the header of the column that we're grouping by. Now you can see that there's one group for each year of date. And within each year of date, there's one group for each month of date that there is data for within that year of date group, and so on for the rest of the groupings. And with that, we now conclude the first video in this series on groupings and functions. Tune into the next video for a more advanced look into the kinds of calculations we can perform using what we've learned about formulas and groupings in this video. And if you have any further questions or just want to learn more, be sure to check out our documentation at help.sigmacomputing.com. Until then, take care and happy calculating.